Hey guys, it's Laney and welcome back to the shop. Well, it's been a while since I've made a project video and I do apologize about being away so long. Uh, things have gotten busy around the shop, which I can't complain about. I'm very happy with that. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, Simple Design of Ocala started a new drum line, uh, Cajon Drums and uh, As Do Music. And they're really doing well. Um, a local music store here in Ocala wants to start carrying the drum line, so I'm very happy about that and things are going in the direction I want to go with it. Um, this project video is going to be about building a mini buffet and hutch and these plans are courtesy of the Newfoundland woodworker and Matthew Agate. Um, the hutch, and I'll show you a, a little bit more close-up detail of the plans, the plans are free. You can get them at the Newfoundland woodworker. Uh, Newfoundland. <laughs> I always mess that name up. The Newfoundland woodworker.com um, and uh, I'll uh, leave a link for it right here in the video. All right, so let's start off by looking at the plans. Um, this is the plan that's courtesy of the NewfoundlandWoodworker.com, and uh, it's uh, Matthew's mini buffet and hutch, and uh, it's kind of a Mennonite style hutch, um, and uh, I'm going to be making uh, this one out of oak, but this plan. Uh, has it kind of shows you on the first page it kind of shows you a height this thing is only five foot tall it's a mini hutch uh, and there's a gentleman standing next to it just to kind of give you a reference as to how tall this hutch is um, there are detailed measurements and layouts of the top and bottom pieces and then it goes into breakdowns of the mortise and tenon joinery of all the individual parts the panel door parts shows you the measurements of the back of the hutch and the buffet and then the top of the buffet the mortise and tenon joints and uh, measurements of that so it's a pretty detailed plan um, pretty easy to follow and we are going to follow along and uh, make one of our own so here we go all right guys well the first thing is to cut up our sheet goods i've got a three quarter inch um, sheet of plywood oak plywood and because of the size of my shop i went ahead and bucked everything down to rough dimensions all the parts and everything uh, for the carcass or the case of this uh, buffet um, down to some rough dimensions so it's easier for me to work inside the shop and everything but I've got all the parts and pieces up here up in my rack I've got all of the uh, oak wood for the um, door frames uh, and the face frames of this uh, buffet and hutch as well as you know the top and everything so we're going to jump right in and we're going to get to it and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on the carcass of this which is going to be the main body of the buffet and uh, hutch and it comes in it's two parts the buffet and the hutch uh, and they're joined together so we're going to start with the buffet first and get those parts cut out and the first step is going to be cutting everything down to its final dimensions on the table saw. Then we'll throw a dado slit in there and cut the dados for the joinery. All right, here we go. All right, guys, first step is to take these uh, panels down to their final dimension on the table saw. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And once we get all the panels cut down to their final dimensions according to the plans, we're going to go ahead and set up the dado stack and get ready to cut the dados in the panels for the joinery. Uh, as always, hearing protection and eye protection is a good thing. So let's get started and uh, let's clean off these glasses so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I got the table saw fins already set up and um, I'm going to uh, first, these panels, uh, the side panels of the buffet are 14 inches wide. I've got my uh, rough, I've got them rough cut to 16 inches. I got my fence set up for 15 inches because what I want to do is I want to go ahead and cut one side, get it down, and then flip it over once I have a nice straight edge on one side, a uh, reference edge, and then I'm going to cut it down to its final dimension. That way I have two nice clean edges for these panels. Uh, so we'll get started on that and uh, get her done. <laughs>
one thing I wanted to mention, because these uh, sheets were cut down to rough dimensions, you know, with a skill saw, um, and I used an edge guide and everything, so they're pretty straight cuts. But what I like to do first, you know, before I make a cut, is make sure that I am using, or I have, a square 90 degree edge to reference off of and um, they're pretty good uh, because of that um, straight edge I use to cut them with so we're good to go on them uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get these two panels cut down to 15 inches move my fence over uh, to its final dimension and cut them down and then we'll work on the rest of the panels now I've got the rip cuts down um, on the two buffet sides down to their final dimensions but now I'll have to cut them to their final length but before I set up for those cross cuts I want to go ahead and do all my rip cuts first um, and uh, get them out of the way that way when I set up for cross cutting I can cut all the panels that I need to do so I'll get all these pieces cut and then uh, when we get back to or get ready to do the dados I'll get back with you show you how that's done all right guys and gals um, got all the parts of the buffet and hutch uh, panels side panels cut down to their final dimensions and now we're getting ready to um, cut the dados in and in the plans it calls for in the hutch part the top part calls for uh, two dados um, from the top we've got uh, the first one's going to be 11 and 3 8 and then the next one is going to be 21 and 3 8 um, from the top on both sides I've got my parts uh, marked I picked out the face already of all the pieces what's going to be you know the exposed face so the back side is the side that we got to mark and um, I've got a 23 30 seconds dado stack in there. I didn't go three quarters. I want to be able to creep up on it. I want to do a cut, couple of test cuts. Make sure uh, that I have a nice snug fit with these dado joints. And um, so what I have here is a piece of scrap wood cut from the same sheet. And um, I've got my depth gauge here. I'm going to go ahead and set my depth. My dados are going to be three eighths of an inch deep. And um, we're going to go ahead and make a test cut, see if it fits. And uh, if it does, then we'll go ahead and mark and cut the actual work pieces that we're working on. So let's get a couple test cuts done. First thing I'm going to do is I got my depth gauge zeroed out. And we'll go ahead and raise that blade up to 3 8 that out of the way and now we can go ahead and run this first test cut see how it looks if it fits in all like I said we'll move on to the next part and we'll get this thing rolling now uh, what I did just so you know to kind of uh, have you caught up is I have the two sides for the top hutch two sides for the bottom buffet now in the plan it doesn't show the bottom shelf of the buffet uh, and what wanted to do is go ahead and give you those measurements now so you'll have them and uh, the bottom let's see here this is the buffet bottom shelf the measurements on it are 13 and a half wide by 23 and 3 quarter inches deep or long should I say and what that is is our buffet <coughs> and our cabinet is 24 and a half inches wide finished measurements outside to outside 24 and a half inches on those two side panels we're gonna have 3 eighths of an inch deep dados that this bottom shelf goes into um, so we're gonna subtract 3 quarters of an inch from that 24 and a half and that gives us 23 and 3 quarters and that's our finished length for our bottom panel 
Now the 13 and a half, our buffet uh, width is 14 inches. On the back side of the buffet in the hutch is a quarter inch panel. Uh, the plan calls for two separate panels, but I'm actually going to run one full panel from top to bottom on this plan. And it's going to be a quarter inch panel. It's about 7 16ths, but a quarter inch it will give you enough room to play with so it's not, you have a nice clean line. Um, and so from that 20, or uh, I'm sorry, from that 14, you need to take that uh, quarter inch off so that gives you 13 and 3 quarters. Well, now the face of this plywood, there's going to be a face frame that goes around the sides and the top, you know, of the buffet. But there's no face frame um, rail that's going to cover, or you know, this plywood, this bottom shelf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add on a quarter inch hardwood edging, oak edging. And so I needed to account for that quarter inch edging as well. So that's why our finished width is 13 and a half. And I'll show you more when we get into that step. Uh, but I just wanted to give you those measurements. So let's go over that again. The bottom shelf is going to be 23 and 3 quarter inches long, 13 and a half inches wide. And what that will account for is we're going to be adding a quarter inch uh, edging on the front. And then of course we need to room for that back quarter inch panel that fits in the back dado, uh, or rabbits should I say. And um, Everything will fit nice and tight. So there's those measurements uh, for that bottom shelf. Now the top of the buffet calls for a cleating uh, frame. It's going to be a mortise and tennis frame uh, and it gets attached. And the same thing at the top of the buffet. And what um, gets attached to the top of the buffet is the, you know, the, the countertop or the buffet top will get attached to that cleating same thing as the very top of the hutch and we'll get into that in just a minute but that's going to be cut out of the um, one by stock that uh, of oak to make that cleating for the top of the buffet and the top of the hutch before the solid piece goes on so i know it sounds confusing we'll get into it uh, as we go let's go ahead and get these dados cut in our side panels of our buffet and hutch that way we can start getting an assembly together and then as we get into the other components, I'll explain it to you a little bit more um, so you have, you know, so you can follow along. All right, so here we go. Let's get these test cuts done. I've done talk long enough. So now with that test cut done, I can go ahead and and even though the stock is 23 30 seconds, cutting the dado at 23 30 seconds is just too sloppy. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove two of my shims. I've got uh, two shims in there in the stack and uh, then I'm going to run another test cut and see if we can get a better fit because that is just that there's no if you can if you can see that there is absolutely no grip no nothing it's just it's sloppy so that is just too wide of a cut I'll get this changed out and then we'll get started again 
All right, guys, I reset up the dado stack, and uh, what come to be is I had to bring it down to an 11 16th inch dado stack and add a 4,000th an inch shim, uh, and that gave me the fit that I want. Um, it took a couple of test drives. Like I said, I brought it down to an 11 16th and um, added a 4,000th of an inch shim, and that gives me the fit that I want. There's no play, it's uh, just a little bit of pressure to put it in, um, but that is, that's the cut I wanna make. So 11 16th with a 4,000th of an inch shim. I'll have to remember that in the future. What I'm gonna do is actually, this is going to be the start of, I'm gonna start making some more grooves with different size dado stacks and I'll mark them and that way I have a test jig that I can just test my piece so I know how to set up my dado stack from the start. All right, well, the depth is great. I tell you, for a shop-made jig, that little depth gauge is dead on accurate. Uh, did not have to play around with it at all. Set it for 3 eighths of an inch, and that's exactly what I got to the T. Checked it with my calipers, and it was dead on. Alrighty, so now, and you know, I'm building these off these plans. Uh, like I said, they're available at the uh, Newfoundland Woodworker. And I'm trying to uh, give you guys basically uh, a build along uh, to reference off of. And uh, that's, you know, and I think it's a neat little hutch. Uh, so that's why I'm going into, you know, so much detail on this. We're gonna start off with and let me let me show you what it looks like on the plan okay this gives you the two sides of the buffet and the two sides of the top hutch and these are the panels that we just cut down to size um, so now we need to go ahead and mark our marks for our dados according to the plan and this will be for our shelves in our hutch as well as our bottom shelf in our buffet. So we're going to start off with, and temporarily I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I have uh, projects set up here in the corner so I couldn't set up my little assembly table where I normally mark things out so I got to do everything on the table saw. Um, for now. So what I've got, we're going to start with the hutch, the top side pieces. And I've got uh, some blue tape on here to mark that this is going to be the face. And this is the left side of the hutch. Same thing here. This is going to be the face and the right side of the hutch. Now, the face, I'm talking about the exposed sides, of course. So, with this being the left and the right, I'm going to lay this down. And I'm a big fan of blue tape. I like it. I think you've seen me use it in a few videos. And what I'm going to do is simply mark a B for the back, an F for the front, a B for the bottom, and a T for the top. So what that tells me is that this is the bottom, the top, this is going to be the front where my face frames gets attached, and this is going to be the back. I'm going to do that for both pieces. And it just helps you because you're, we're going to be making a lot of cuts uh, in, the, in these pieces. So it just helps you kind of keep things um, referenced. 
you know, so you don't lose track. And when these two parts are side by side, you have back, front, front, back. Okay? So that way they will sit like so. Alright, so let's go off the plan here. The first thing we have is it calls for a 3 8 inch deep 7 16 or yeah 3 8 <laughs> let's start over calls for a 3 8 of an inch by 7 16 dado or rabbit on the back of each panel now um, that is going to be too big for the panel that I'm using I'm using a quarter inch panel solid all the way up so I want a 3 8 by 1 quarter inch rabbit on mine. So I'm going to just kind of 3 8 by 1 quarter. Just make that change because I'm using a different kind of panel. The back of this buffet and hutch uh, is designed for uh, some beadboard to go in the top and then a regular you know, quarter inch panel on the bottom. But I want, um, I just want a solid oak you know, look of this buffet and hutch and everything. So I'm gonna use a solid oak panel um, all the way up at the top and it's a quarter inch. So uh, make that minor adjustment and I'll go ahead and make my marks. As soon as I find my marking gauge. So yeah, you know, I, I thought you guys, I was hoping you guys didn't forget about me while I was, you know, out, uh, not, you know, working um, and not making videos. And I'm so glad that you're, uh, you know, come around to watch um, the video and, and, you know, stay with me and see how I'm doing or what I'm doing. All right. I've got my... Marking gauge set to a quarter. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side. And of course, you know, you don't have to make a mark all the way down. I just like reference lines so I know what I'm doing, where I'm going. All right, so that takes care of the back of it. Now, from the top of each piece, our first dado and according to the plan it has it marked as the bottom of the dado so from the top 11 and 3 8 down I'm gonna put a little X on the top side of that mark that I just made to reference what side of that line that I'm making a cut on and then the next one calls for 21 and 3 eighths to the bottom of the dado so then again uh, or there again I'm going to make a little X on that reference mark we'll do the same thing here Look at that, 11 and 3 eighths, and 21 and 3 eighths. And I'll make a little X at the top, top to same thing that I did there. So that takes care of the markings of the top two pieces. I've got the uh, right buffet side and the left buffet side and I got my face marked already. So I'm going to set like this. Make sure I got this in the grain direction that I want. Yeah, and that's important. Make sure that you look at your grain direction and everything. You know that that everything is going the way you want it to, um, and especially if there's a lot of cathedral or flames, you know, in there, you may want them all facing, you know, one direction or the other. And all right, so same thing. 
top, bottom, front, back. Your um, labels are going to be opposite of each other. So we have the back, front, this will be the front, back, top, bottom. Back, front, front, back. That way, everything in your face, blue tape on your face so you know what's going to be the outside. And there we go. So, on these measurements, <clears throat> this calls for a dado for the bottom shelf at 23 and a half inches from the top. And that will be uh, 23 and a half inches again is the bottom of the dado. So I'm going to put an X on the top side of it so I know what side to cut on. Um, and again, since I'm using uh, a quarter inch back panel all the way down, on the back of my panels I need a one quarter inch by three eighths of an inch deep. And I've already got my marking gauge still set from the other panels. So I'll go ahead and make them marks. Alright, now, a little technical. Here we go. Now, we've got our back rabbits marked. We got our dado marked for our bottom shelf, the bottom of the, the buffet. Here's the thing now. Okay, on the top, the top calls for a frame cleating, uh, which is a one and three quarter inches wide frame, and the frame is mortise and tenon joined together. And it calls for it to be biscuited. Oops. Um, to the side panel here and attach through biscuits. Well, I'm not a big biscuit guy. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to put a, another rabbit, or, <clears throat> yeah, Dale, rabbit, we'll get it right. Um, I'm going to put another dado across the top. And uh, actually, it's a rabbit. <laughs> Can you tell it's been one of them days that my frame will attach to and glue into? Um, you can Craig joint, you know, pocket hole uh, join it, you know, butt join it together with a Craig hole jig if you want. But I'm actually going to cut a 3 8 inches deep by 3 quarter inches wide rabbit um, on both panels that my cleating framing will sit into because when that cleating framing is going to sit in and then the top of the buffet the countertop should you say it's a small buffet I call it a little countertop is going to be attached to it so what I want is I want these sides to go all the way up to the bottom of that um, that buffet top so I want to go ahead and cut my rabbit in here that my frame can sit down in attach everything together uh, and go from there. So I need to make my marks for a three quarter inch rabbit across the top. The plan doesn't show you uh, how the top plating is attached to the sides, uh, but the creator of the plan, Michael Agat, uh, Matthew Agat's father, who drew up these plans and did a great job at them. Uh, explained that uh, in his buffet that he made for Matthew uh, when Matthew was a baby uh, which these plans are based off of he biscuited everything together he biscuited the the cleating frames to the side panels and everything and uh, so you can do that um, you can uh, attach it any way you want <laughs>
All right, guys, I'm over here at the router table now, and what I'm going to do on the router table is go ahead and cut that quarter inch rabbit up the back of all four pieces um, of this buffet and hutch. I've got a half inch spiral bit in the uh, router, and the bit is raised up to three eighths of an inch. I've got part of it buried into this fence and uh, that way I make a quarter inch cut and basically what I referenced it off of is this is a sheet uh, or a piece of the back paneling that I'm going to be using uh, for this buffet and hutch and basically I wanted to make sure that I have the right depth cut for this size paneling and the paneling varies I mean it says quarter inch but it's um actually you know it's like 730 seconds um it's uh it varies so I went ahead and used an actual piece as the reference to set my bit so now all I have to do is Again, that's why this tape comes in handy. Uh, I've got everything marked. I know what side goes up against the fence. And go ahead and run it through. So let's do that now. Okay, now on this back panel, uh, or I'm sorry, on the bottom panels of the hutch, actually it's the buffet part, um, something a little bit different. This rabbit in the back is going to go all the way through to this dado, and it's going to stop there. So when I'm running it through, what I'm going to do is I, since I'm running it through this way, I'm actually going to slide that dado over the bit and then start my cut. And I'm gonna do that for both. Cause we're not, this, this rabbit does not get cut all the way through to the bottom. Now on this panel, since I started from the top there, when I, I went slow and once I got to this, and you'll see some burning on here because I went a little bit too slow, um, so I'll have to clean that up. But, uh, oops, so that rabbit stops there. Right now we need to go ahead and get some of this oak stock down, this one by stock we have, and start making the cleat frames so we can assemble these uh, and, and glue this these panels up that we just cut so um, and those are going to be mortise and tenon and I'll show you how to do them all right guys we're back at the table saw and we're getting ready to start on the cleats of the chest now the cleats and I'll give you a little bit of reference um, the cleat frames go at the top of the buffet and the top of the hutch and that is what the top of the buffet panel mounts to and the top of the hutch and they get mortise and tenon and all, all the dimensions for the mortise and tenons and everything are laid out in the plans so you can go along with that and uh, that's what we're getting ready to do right now I've got the uh, oak boards rough cut to their length and they're definitely rough cut to their width. They get cut down to an inch and three quarters wide. Um, I'm going to 
clean up the edges of each board, make sure I have nice square edges, um, and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and rip them down to their final width of inch and three quarters. And when I do that, or when I'm done doing that, then we'll go ahead and start uh, laying out and making the mortise and tenon joints. <laughs> All right, with uh, those rails and styles of the cleats uh, frames done, we can go ahead and start laying out the mortise and tenons for them. Um, All right, guys, we're getting ready to do the mortise and tenon joints for the two cleat frames. Now, I want to take a minute uh, for those of you who have never used a mortising machine or, you know, have never set one up to kind of uh, walk you through the steps of setting up your mortise uh, bit and the mortise bits look like this oops sorry they have a drill bit in the center and then a square four point in and getting this set up uh, is important so that your drill bit is leading a little bit and clearing out some of that waste so this square bit can take away and square up those mortises and uh, so what I wanted to do is take a minute to kind of uh, show you the setup and um, how to go about doing that all right well when it comes to setting up the mortise a bit um, you need to make sure a couple things. One, that the square cutter is square with your stock. And a way to know that is uh, run a test piece and if the sides of your mortise is a little jagged, then you know that your square cutter is not square with your piece that you're working on. Um, and you really wanna take some time to set that up and make sure that you are cutting square. One way to do that is bring the fence back a little bit Put a piece of stock there, you know, flat stock. Um, bring the mortiser down uh, to where the blade is in front, or the you know the cutter is in front of that stock, and make sure that both corners of the back side of that um, cutter is resting nice and evenly against that stock. But uh, before we do that, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have enough of a lead advance on this center screw so that it as you cut your mortise it's taking away a majority of the waste so the cutter can do its job and square up that mortise if you have too much of a lead then that is going to mess up the bottom of your mortise because that drill bit's just going to go right straight through um, and depending on how thin your stock is that you're working with you could blow right through it if you're not careful so you don't want that much of a lead and one good way of setting up uh, this with a nice just a nice enough advance is uh, something as simple as this this is a set of spark plug gap uh, setters and it has a bunch of different shims in it and uh, take one of those shims and um, you can test to see which one you like, you know, which one works better for you. But on this back side over here is a set screw that holds the center piece in. You want to bring that down a little bit, uh, the, the square cutter, you want to bring it down a little bit. And you want to slide that shim in there. Now with that shim in there, and I'll get here so I can see you. You take that shim and you stick it in there and bring your square cutter right up to it and then tighten that set screw just finger tight for now and then on that center screw you want to make sure that that is pushed all the way up and set and when it is all the way up go ahead and tighten everything down now take and loosen that set screw for the square cutter 
and push it up. And that'll give you just the right amount of advance on that screw so it can do its job and let the square cutter do its job. And so that's basic, the basic setup. And uh, we'll come back and I'll show you how to square up the bit. All right, one way to um, square everything up on this bit here is to make sure, or not make sure, but uh, bring your fence back a little. And this is an old Harbor Freight machine, so I got all kinds of clamps on to make sure nothing moves when it's uh, going through its setup. And uh, go ahead and bring the mortiser down. What you're looking for is that the back side of the square cutter, that both sides of it, on the back side, both of the little uh, teeth, are resting evenly on the front of your stock piece that you put in here. And that's, that's a good way to ensure that you're, you're squared up. Now, as you're making a cut, like I said, if your mortise sides are a little jagged, then that tells you that's an indication that your square cutter is not straight. So um, you can make some adjustments, you know, whichever way you need to, to have nice, pretty mortises. So what we're doing now, and uh, let's see here. I'll color it in for you. Our plans call for a three quarter inch mortise. It's a quarter inch wide uh, and tenon for our joints, for our frame. So what we're gonna do on the mortiser is, and I colored it in, is we're gonna go ahead and cut out the mortise slots. And then we'll go over to the table saw. I got the dado sled uh, set up with the dado blade. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut these tenons and to get all that done. And that way we can get our glue up finished. <laughs> all right all right guys over here at the table saw I've got what I have is I have a three-quarter inch dado stack set up in there uh, in the table I've got my dado sled and I've got my fence set or my stop block set um, for these tenons so all I have to do is simply run it through flip it run it through flip it run it through and so on and so forth until all four sides are cut. Uh, the tenons are three quarters of an inch um, long and they're a quarter inch wide. So we'll go through and run a couple of these and then we'll get ready for the glue up. tenons fit in the mortises so I'll go ahead and I'll run the rest of these all right guys well I'm gonna go ahead and get these parts glued up and uh, I think after we after I start the glue up and all this uh, I think I'm gonna end part one of this video right here uh, and all that's going to need to be done now is the two frames we just made glued together once they're dry, then we go ahead and glue the sides um, and 
of the case and carcass and all together and get started on making the face frames for that. So we'll pick that up in part two of the video, but I, w I don't want to overwhelm you guys with such a long video on the first go around. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it up to this point. I hope you're getting a lot of information and go to the Newfoundland woodworker.com. I'll put a link of it right here um, and go ahead and in the free plan section of the website, download the free plan of this hutch and build along. Um, and that way you're all caught up by the time part two comes out. I'll get started on it uh, right away and get it out to you as soon as possible and we'll get this project wrapped up. Once again, the newfoundlandwoodworker.com. Go ahead and download the plan if you want to build along. Be sure to visit my website, www.asimpledesignofocala.com or tweet me at WoodJedi on Twitter. Um, say hi. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash a simple design of Ocala. See you next time.